Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, I'm Irina and today I'm gonna show you some Barbie girl Maikoa. I found my old Barbie in the barn, as you can see she knew better days and I decided I'll turn the doll into an angel Christmas tree topper. Since the doll's makeup is not really looking like an angel's, but quite the opposite, the first thing to do is to wash it off. I've used nail polish remover and then acetone here. I decided to paint the face with acrylic, it's easier for me to draw a new face like this. I'm mixing ivory with terracotta colors to get the skin color. In the last moment I remembered that I'm supposed to prime first. I'm priming with white acrylic primer, it dries instantly and after that I'm painting in skin color the face, hands and decollete. Of course much less skin will be visible in the end, but I decided to paint a little extra. After the paint has dried well, I begin drawing the face. The face needs to be very gentle, dim, so do not use black paint here, brown is much better and the eyebrows can be even lighter than that. Then I'm drawing the whites of the eyes and teeth, the iris, of course I'm making the girl blue-eyed, then the pupils here dark brown again. Finally, I'm drawing pink lips and brown the cheeks with the same pink color using a sponge. The girl is not gonna need her legs anymore, so I get rid of them. In order the doll was held well over the tree, I needed some kind of tube, so I took a paper towel tube as a base. I'm making many small cuts along one edge, then squeeze and hot glue this impromptu skirt to the doll's hips. Then I'm coating the tube with white glue and wrapping it in a thin layer of cotton wool. Then I'm adding some cotton up to the top of the doll, it will look like a tight-fitting dress. I'm widening more cotton at the bottom of the skirt to make it flat and then I'm applying white glue all over the surface of the cotton. If it's hard to work with glue and cotton sticks to your brush, just thin the glue with water to make it less sticky. Sometimes you have to mix half glue, half water to make it work. Sometimes less water is needed, this depends on your glue quality. Mine was cheap and I didn't have to thin it at all. I'm applying several thin layers of cotton to smooth the surface and then covering it with glue. I decided to make the girl figure more vivid, so to say, and make one arm bent. Since this is not a Barbie with bending legs and arms, oh, how I dreamed of such a doll when being a child, but mine is an ordinary plastic doll, so I'm cutting her arm in the elbow, cut out a piece of plastic and hot glue it to place. Now I have to do something with hair. With this haircut she got, nothing can be done, so I finish what I studied many years ago and cut the doll's hair till almost bald. I'm coating the head with glue and covering with thin cotton wool strands. Since the angel will be wearing the hood, the hair will be visible only around the face, so I wasn't zealous here. Let's return to the skirt. The fur coat will be open at the front, so here I wanted to make beautiful skirt folds. I'm taking a thin layer of cotton wool, almost transparent, and coating it well with glue so that it is soaked through. Then I'm attaching the skirt and shaping it to get nice rounded folds. Thank you. 
To keep the shape well while drying, I made cones. I twisted these cones from foam sheet, some thick paper is ok too, and in order to prevent sticking to cotton, I'm wrapping it in adhesive tape. I'm using silver one here, but ordinary transparent adhesive tape will do just fine. I'm inserting these cones into the folds, arrange everything as I like and leave it to dry well. After drying and begin making the coat. Although an angel is a disembodied creature, I still decided I want her to wear the coat in winter. I'm starting with the hood, wrapping the head in layer of cotton wool. Here I'm taking thicker layer than the one I used for the skirt, about half a centimeter thick. I'm tearing off all the excess and arranging the cotton in the shape of a hood. I'm covering the body with cotton wool and kneading it over the figure. Adding several layers to the skirt and finally the future sleeves. At this point I thought it would be good to dye the hair before dressing the doll in coat. So I'm pulling down the hood and dyeing the cotton locks to make a blonde look. I'm also tinting a separate lock, I have dried it separately, laying several strands in a shape of lock. After the hair had dried, I put the hood back to place and now I'm coating the entire surface of the cotton with glue, shaping a fur coat. Here you will also need to apply several layers of cotton until you get more or less smooth surface. After the first layer is ready, I'm tying a ribbon at the waist as a belt. Over the back I'm also making two sockets for the wings with a toothpick. Here I'm applying the second layer of cotton, as you can see here, the surface is already looking much smoother. I'm also coating everything with glue, trimming and arranging it, here and there I insert shaping cones under the coat to arrange it beautifully. I let it dry and then covering it with thick white glue to make the coat more rigid. Now for the wings. I'm cutting out the base of the wings from thick cardboard. I'll leave the template for you in the description box as usual. Then I'm wrapping the base in cotton, here a thin layer is quite enough. After the wings are ready and while the cardboard is still wet, I'm shaping the wings a little, making a couple of folds so that the wings were not totally flat. I'm folding the wing a little along the center and making the second fold facing the opposite direction along the very edge of the wing. Next I'm making the feathers. For this I'm winding lots of thin wisps, making what one tip of these rounded. For this I begin rolling the wisp and then I'm bending the very tip and after that rolling it completely. There will be lots of wisps so I wound a certain amount and then decided to twist and glue in stages. I start with the tips of the wings, gluing the first row of feathers. I tried to put them so that the tips protruded beyond the edges of the workpiece to hide the edge. I 
then I'm gluing the next row, here I'm already trying to attach feathers like tiles, hiding the top of the previous row and laying each feather slightly higher or slightly lower the next one. This creates a very beautiful texture, really similar to feathers. The smaller the wisp that you make, the more you'll need, but also the more beautiful the result will be. I quickly got tired of twisting the whips in advance and I switched to another method. I'm twisting one at a time and immediately glue it to place. There's no difference how to do this, but it seemed easier for me, the progress is immediately visible. By the way, you can make such wings as an independent decoration for the Christmas tree. I attach the feathers over about two-thirds of the wings this way and then change the styling methods. Now I'm gluing the feathers along the upper border of the wings in a circle and moving from the outer edge to the inner part which will be at the shoulder of the angel. After the wings were completely ready from one side, I dried them thoroughly. After spending the night on the battery, they became very strong and then turned away and repeated from the other side. Here I thought that usually wings are not covered with the same feathers over the entire surface as I did, but have flight feathers at the lower part which are longer and larger than the main plumage. So here I have already tried to portray a more or less realistic plumage. I'm making three rows of long feathers and placing them in a straight line, not tile-like as I did before, so that the borders of the rows are clearly visible as on real wings. Then I'm switching to shorter feathers as I did at the other side. I'm covering the upper third in a circle as I did from the other side, moving from the outer edge to the shoulders. After everything is ready, I let the wings dry well again. Now let's return to the angel. The coat has dried well, it is now tough and durable. I decided to paint the coat at this stage in order I could then work with trim, not being afraid to stain it. I was thinking over for a long time what color to make a coat. I didn't want to leave it white, but at the same time, bright colors for an angel are not okay too. I decided for something like champagne color. First, the prime color, here I'm using a calm beige shade and painting the entire coat. And then I'm making the mother of pearl overlay. I didn't have a ready-made beige mother of pearl color, so I'm mixing white pearl color with a drop of bronze and some gold. I think mixing gold with silver will do the same effect. And I'm painting the coat with this beige metallic. After drying, I'm hot gluing the wings to place. Now for the trim. Here I'm gluing thin strips of cotton over the edges of the coat. I'm using cotton roll ribbons about 2 cm wide and folding them in half to make an approximately 1 cm poof trim. Then, as usual, I'm coating the trim with white glue. And of course, do not forget to make the cuffs on the sleeves. I made flat sleeves, so making large cuffs. The base for fur is ready and now I'll add some texture. 
I'm tearing off a very thin translucent layer of cotton wool and covering it well with glue so that the cotton is soaked through. And after that, in short movements, I gather cotton in small creases with a thick needle or a toothpick, moving from the edges to the center. I'm trying to keep the shape of the piece so that I'm ended up with something close to a rectangle. After all the cotton is crinkled, I am carefully taking it and placing over the trim. Using a toothpick, I am arranging this crinkled layer over the trim, removing everything that is sticking out too much and admiring the resulting fur trim. Wow, that's beautiful! I repeat the process again and again, adding more crinkled pieces and gradually covering the entire fur trim over the angel's coat. It looks very realistic, I love this technique. If you are new, I want to say a big welcome and would love you to join my community by tapping on the subscribe button as well as the bell to keep up to date with everything I have to show. I still have to finish doing the girl's hair. The lock of hair that I've made and colored separately is still flat on one side. I'm adding volume over the other side. First I'm shaping it with thicker pieces of cotton and then covering it over with thin wisps, imitating hair. After drying, I'm painting everything and, when it dries, I'm hot gluing it under the hood. I also decided to add some real fluff and feathers to the wings. I'm taking a couple of fluffy feathers and hot gluing the longer one along the inner side of the wing, tip down, so that the fluffs stick out from the base and the own of the feather is not visible. And I add the second feather, smaller one, with its tip up. I add more feathers to the second wing the same way. I'm also adding a golden trim over the edge of the skirt. And some golden rope to the belt. The angel is to have a halo, I'm making it from toothpicks. I'm taking one toothpick at a time and hot gluing the tips together. Due to the fact that the tips are pointed, toothpicks fit perfectly in the shape of the sun. After the first row is ready, I'm adding more toothpicks in between the first row. They stretch out a little and therefore the sun looks more interesting. Then I'm spray painting the finished sun in gold. And after drying, I'm attaching it to the tip of the hood. By the way, I advise you to make some socket for it there in advance as for the wings, then the halo will hold better. And I'm adding some more embellishments, making some tracery over the coat with silver contour paint. And before the paint has dried, I'm adding small pearls into the paint. It is thick and will hold them well, like glue. I 
I wanted the fur to be ivory and not white for some vintage feel. I'm mixing some ivory paint with white glue to get in translucent paint and covering the fur with this tinted glue. It provides some light ivory hue and adds some rigidity to the trim at the same time. I'm also adding some mica, I think it adds to vintage look. Here I'm using two types of flakes, first one is beige and very thin, I'm using it over the fur. And for the skirt of the dress I'm covering it with larger white flakes. The final touch I'm giving the angel a bell in her hand. I really love the result, the street top is very light thanks to using cotton and would do to any color scheme of the Christmas tree, both bright or pastel. As I used a doll, there's no problem with sculpting face or worrying about figure proportions. I also think it's a great idea to add some fairy lights here. I'll definitely try to do this for my angels shine brightly. You can also use it as a freestanding decor and not a tree top. Let me know what you think of the project down below. I want to thank all of you for joining me today. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.